By early spring, wildflowers, like this cutleaf toothwort, begin blooming in the hills of southern Ohio. Buckeye leaves unfurl under an otherwise leafless canopy. And timber rattlesnakes are emerging from their dens after five months of winter dormancy. Researchers in the School of Environment and Natural Resources at The Ohio State University have been tracking these snakes for the last three years and are eager to see which ones have already emerged. Timber rattlesnakes are state endangered in Ohio, and the main goal of this research is to better understand how ongoing forest management practices may impact remaining populations in the state. This is one of our most scenic dens, this nice sandstone outcrop, this big crevice we've seen snakes come out of. On top of that, behind me there's a series of holes just uphill under some rock outcrops that we've seen snakes and come and go from as well. But the reality is we only know of about three or four adults that actually use this den. At this site, most of our dens just have a few adult snakes using them, and they're widely scattered across the landscapes, and most look nothing like this. Most are much more difficult to peg down as even looking like a snake den. Other snake species, like this rat snake, often share space with timber rattlesnakes in their winter hibernacula. With no obvious rattlesnake activity at this den today, we set cameras to capture snake activity and move on to the next den. Upon arriving at our next stop, it's clear that Maya has emerged and moved away from her den site, which is little more than a nondescript hole on a forested slope. After a brief search, we managed to spot Maya tucked in the leaf litter, well concealed about 20 meters away from her den opening. Here's Maya. Today is April 6th, and she is the first female we've gotten this year. She's still very dusty because she has just recently come out of her den. So we're here at a den that has three of our telemetered snakes. We've got Arnold, Cricket, and Brienne, and right beneath us, I can see one of them, at least probably one of them, is out basking. Certainly a timber rattlesnake. I'm going to guess it's Brienne, so I've turned this to her frequency, and we're going to see if we can get in close and confirm that this is actually Brienne out for the first time this year. Yep, this is her. So this is Brienne's first time out this year, and you can see she's got that nice covering of dust. She looks pretty good. Oh, actually, I think she's got some lesions on her face. As I look at her more closely now, it definitely looks like she's got some potential lesions on her face, so we'll at some point pretty soon want to capture her and take some swabs to confirm, or hopefully uh, confirm absence of snake fungal disease, or rather not detect it at least. Um, but hopefully, I don't see a whole lot of body lesions or maybe any body lesions, so if it's just that little bit on her face, she might not be in too bad of shape. Uh, she otherwise looks pretty good. But yeah, first time we've seen her out this year. Snake fungal disease is caused by the fungus Ophidiomyces ophiodicola, and it can cause lesions and necrosis in many species of snakes that can sometimes be fatal. So Daryl's den is actually in the middle of this big burned area. So it's, this is an area that was so intensively burned that it actually took out the whole canopy of trees uh, some years ago. But this, his den is right down in a ravine in the, in the middle of this place. So we're walking through this real thick, young, successional kind of growth to get to him. And you can still see the burn scars on a lot of these trees. 
Fire is a natural source of change and disturbance in Ohio's forests, but efforts to prevent all forest fires have largely eliminated its effects on the landscape. Forest managers used carefully controlled burns to try to mimic the natural fire patterns that were once here and promote biodiversity. Though fire undoubtedly poses an occasional and local threat to individual snakes, it may have a net positive effect on prey availability and habitat quality. So I'm using this temperature gun to get the body temperature of Daryl in relation to the surrounding substrate. We saw him about a week ago, so we know he's been above ground for at least that long. By mid-April, the forest floor is alive with blooming flowers and buzzing insects. Though the canopy is still relatively bare, more trees come into bloom like this red bud, and leaves begin to bud out. Snakes emerge slowly throughout the course of the month, and by mid-April most are still underground. Those that are out are generally near their dens and remain buried in the leaf litter most of the time. In just a matter of days now, the forest will be lush and green again, and the rattlesnakes will be on the move. <laughs>